high float hydraulics and high float steering. What high float steering is the ability to help stop the drill from skewing. With our high float drills indicated to the large tires, this is a 66 foot common frame we're looking at with no openers. You can see the hitch is fairly narrow. This allows this drill to skew back and forth if you're inside hills. So what we do is we can, when the openers are down, we can extend these steering cylinders. When we extend the steering cylinders, it pushes a hammer back. I'll get a bigger picture. A hammer back that contacts the hitch to hold it all straight. How do we do so? We have our depth circuit engaged, our DC R, our DC P, P sorry, and our DC R pressure and return always in the proper direction. Then our direction control valve controls whether the openers are raising or lowering. So in the lowering position, it's going to send oil out of the st steering R on this side, steering P on that side. So when openers are down, oil is coming out the P port and going over this pressure reducing valve. We've got the lockout closed to lock those cylinders in place because we don't have a tractor hooked up and if we want to move it around we could damage components. The pressure on the base end of those cylinders is a manual adjustment here. You go to the charts to adjust your initial setting and then if you notice your drill is skewing a little bit you can add a little bit of pressure. So when the openers are down, extends the cylinders, and then the reverse happens. We pressure up the R port, and return is the P port when we shift this valve here. That'll suck the rods in, so that'll relieve any excess pressure on those rods. If we were to park this unit with the steering cylinders extended disconnected from a tractor now there's no path for the oil the very first time we go to turn a sharp corner we risk damaging steering cylinder components or bending those cylinders so always good idea after you raise your openers with a depth control circuit and these cylinders have sucked in to close off the ball valve for storage. With our high float hydraulics we have a lockout valve and the oil from this small line goes to the base end of two steering cylinders on the hitch. Okay so when it's open it's allowed the flow to go through there. This is a pressure reduction valve we'll talk about that in a second. So let's see where we get our oil from on the valve. So we will have one valve label labeled STRGR, that's the return, and STRGP, that's pressure. The pressure oil from this is not coming from pressure before the direction control, it's coming from after. So P, when the openers are down, is coming from A on the direction of control spool. And then the return is going to B. So the R port is ported to B on direction control. The A is ported to the, the pressure side on the steering. So with the openers down, the high float steering cylinders are extending to hold hammers against the frame to hold the hitch straighter to help resist skewing. There is a manual relief adjustment. So that's set to the charts to start 
and then if the customer notices the drill skewing you can add or if you have relatively flat land and an easy pull you don't need that. We have another one of those CX EB, EA check valves. What we do with this check valve is, it's not a pilot operated check valve, it's just a manual check valve on the return cycle. So when we pressure up the rods to suck the cylinders in, we don't need to reduce the pressure. So that just allows the oil to bypass this pressure reducing valve. And then when we're on the pressure end of things, the check valve is closed and forces the oil to be pressure reduced by this valve right here. So let's review what we've learned so far. We've got pressure oil that would exit this high flow block after the direction control valve on the A port and then it feeds it over to the STRGP over on the right side of the valve and directs it to this pressure reduction valve. Then we manually reduce the pressure and then send that reduced pressure to the base end of the hydraulic cylinders for high float steering and that effectively extends the rods pushing hammers against the frame and allowing that drill to help resist skewing because it's going to a adjusted relief. We'll just go over to the drawing so you can see what's going on there. So we'll first go over to the high float block. Just going to zoom in a little bit so we can look at the lower left hand corner where they're showing that high float steering. So the pressure oil, directional control pressure oil comes into the valve on the P port, always the same direction. Then our directional control valve would be mounted down here. We can see it up in the corner over here. And that pressure oil is diverted to the A port of that direction control valve. And we can see by the drawing a is ported to the SDRG-P. That moves over to the pressure reduction valve. And then when we want to retract those steering cylinders, we select raise for the opener circuit. And now when we select raise for that circuit, the B port becomes a pressure side and the A simply becomes return. So when B is pressured, it'll retract the rods for the high float steering cylinders. Let's move over to the pressure reduction valve to show you what's going on inside there. So it enters this valve with the selection of down, openers down, the VLV-P, forces the oil through a pressure reduction valve and we set that pressure to what the recommendations are on the chart over here on the left. Then it applies that pressure to the cylinder base end under cylinder P and it effectively holds that cylinder to the adjusted relief helping that drill resist skewing. The return oil from the rod is the cylinder R. So when it's in the downward position, return oil would come here and travel back to the high flow block by the VLVR. Now with our directional control spool, we select raise. Now the VLVR becomes the pressure side of things. It enters the valve here we can see it's ported over directly to the rod end of the cylinders. That will retract those hammers. And on the base end, so now the base end becomes the return path. Oil simply shortcuts past the CKBA one-way check valve and goes back out the VLV-P port.